Hello, I'm Georgia Churchill, the storyteller. Today, I'm going to tell you Jack and the Beanstalk. You all know this story, but it's a good story. It's from England, and next week, I want to tell you another Jack story, Jack and the Black Bulls, but this is the first of the Jack stories. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a little boy named Jack. Jack lived with his mama and his papa, and they were happy. But then, nobody knew where he came from, but a great big giant came down, and he was stomping all around on the gardens with his great big feet and squishing them, and, and then he stepped on Jack's daddy. Oh, and then the giant disappeared, and nobody knew where he went. But now... Jack's daddy was dead, and the gardens, too many gardens, were squished. There just wasn't enough food. It was lucky for Jack and his mama that they had a cow. But then one day, there wasn't any food for the cow. Jack's mama said to him, Jack, honey, I want you to take the cow to market tomorrow and sell her. And Jack, get as much money as you can, because we need every penny. The next morning, Jack was walking along the road toward the marketplace with the cow when he met a little tiny man wearing a red jacket and a red cap. Good morning to you now, Jackie boy. Where are you going with that fine cow? Now Jack had never seen that little man before in his life, and he didn't know how the man knew his name, but he was polite. He said, Good morning, sir. I'm taking the cow to market. I've got to get as much money as I can for her because me and my mama need every penny. Oh, Jack, I've got something for you that's better than money. He pulled out of his pocket a handful of dried beans, all different colors, sparkly. These are magic beans, Jackie boy, and they're better than money. Better than money? Oh, thank you, sir. You may have the cow and I'll take the beans. Jack ran home to his mama. Jack, honey, you're back so soon. Did you get a lot of money for the cow? Oh, mama, I got something better than money. I got beans. Oh, Jack, there's not even enough there to cook for supper. And his mama took the beans and threw them out the window, running to her bed crying. And that made Jack cry. They didn't have any supper that night. In the morning, Jack couldn't look out his window because there was something green in front of it. He ran outside, and there was the biggest bean plant he had ever seen. Why, the stem, the stalk, was as big as a tree trunk, and it went up and up into the clouds. And I don't know why, but Jack decided to climb that bean stalk. It was easy to climb because the leaves were so big. He put his foot where the leaf came out of the stalk, and then he'd reach up for the next leaf, and he climbed up until a bird flew past his face and climbed up until he was in the clouds that were gray and foggy and wet. And then he came to a land above the clouds. And right away, he saw the most enormous castle. He walked to it, and even when he raised his arm all the way up, he was still only knocking on the bottom of the door. The door opened, and there stood a giant woman. At first, she didn't even see Jack, but then she looked down. Oh, hello, little boy. What are you doing here? I'm awful hungry. Could you give me some food? Oh, I can't let you into the castle. My husband, the giant, eats little children. Oh, but I'm so hungry. Couldn't you hide me? Well, I suppose I could. So she picked Jack up in her hands and took him into the kitchen, put him on the table, and gave him what to her was just a crumb of bread. But what to Jack was a nice big chunk. And then she hid him underneath a bowl, 
propping one edge of the bowl up with a handle of a spoon. And then they could hear the giant coming, his big old feet pounding on the ground and him saying, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Oh, be quiet and sit down and eat your supper, said his wife. And when he'd finished eating, he said, Bring me my magic hen. You know, a little girl chicken. She brought him a chicken. It was a regular-sized chicken, but of course to the giant, he was a little teeny chicken. And he said, Way! And that little chicken laid a golden egg, which was a regular-sized chicken egg. But of course to the giant, it was just a little teeny little golden egg. And the giant laughed. <laughs> and then he told the hen to lay again. You want to say it with me? Lay! And the little hen laid another golden egg, and they went on like that until the giant got bored and he fell asleep, snoring enormous snores. I'm sure you can snore enormous snores. <laughs> and while he was sleeping, Jack crawled out from underneath the bowl and ran across the table. He picked up the chicken and he slid down the table leg. He ran along the floor to the door and he squeezed underneath the crack underneath the door because it was a giant's house, you know. And he ran across the land above the clouds until he came to the beanstalk and went all the way down and gave the little magic hen to his mother. And every time they needed money, they just said, Lay. And the little hen laid a golden egg. But one day, I don't know why, but Jack decided to climb the beanstalk again. Up he went through the clouds to the land above the clouds and walked over to the giant's huge castle and knocked on the enormous door. The giant's wife opened the door again. Oh, you're that naughty little boy that stole my husband's magic hen. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm hungry again. Could you give me some food? Well, I don't know if I should. Oh, please, said Jack. I'll be very good. Well, all right. And she picked Jack up and put him on the table and gave him what to her was a crumb of cake, but what to Jack was a nice big piece. And then she hid him under the bowl again. And here came the giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Oh, be quiet and sit down and eat your supper. After the giant had eaten, he said, Bring me my magic harp. You know what a harp is, don't you? It's a musical instrument. It has a, a shape like this with strings in the middle that you pluck. It makes the prettiest music. So the giant's wife brought the giant his magic golden harp, and he said, play like a giant, play! And children, or listeners, the harp played the most beautiful music and put the giant fast asleep, snoring enormous snores. <laughs> And while he was sleeping, Jack ran across the table, picked up the harp, slid down the table leg. He was running across the floor when the harp called out, Master, oh master, Jack's trying to steal me. What, 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 what was that? said the giant. Meanwhile, Jack was squeezing underneath a crack beneath the door and running across the land above the clouds and the giant was saying, wah, wah, where's my harp? Where's my harp? Jack reached the beanstalk and started going down it and the giant says, wah, where's my harp? And then he got up from his chair and thump, 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 ran out the door and across the land above the clouds and started down the beanstalk himself. But Jack, when he got almost to the bottom, called out, mother, mother, bring me an axe. And by the time he reached the ground and handed off the golden harp to his mother, the axe was ready and he whacked, 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 whacked. Whack, 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 as hard as he could, and the beanstalk 
carrying the giant with it. <laughs> the giant was so heavy that he broke right through the crust of the earth and fell down into the middle of the earth into the molten lava. But the earth kind of closed up after him. Of course, it left a big hole in the earth. But when it started to rain, why, that hole got filled up with water. And birds flew by and dropped seeds and plants grew and frogs came hopping. And when the grass was wet, salamanders came sliding over and... Oh, mosquitoes laid their eggs, and then dragonflies came to eat up the mosquitoes. And, well, you can imagine all the creatures that came to live in that lovely lake. Yes, turtles, not whales and seals. They live in salt water. This was a freshwater lake. Well, anyway, with that beautiful lake, and with the giant gone, not only Jack and his mama, Everybody in the whole country lived happily ever after. Thank you. Goodbye.